today we are addressing a problem with our pool heater. It's a Pentair Master Temp 400. You see right now it is heating properly. No service lights on or anything like that. But what's been happening is that it will heat for a little bit, the uh, maybe a minute or a minute and a half. The service heater light will come on. The blower will continue, but the uh, the, the heat will stop. After about 30 seconds or so, this light goes off, and then the heater reignites, heats for about a minute and a half, and then repeat. And that drove our gas bill up quite a bit. So we have a couple of problems to test, and we have tested the thermal regulator, which we have here, and we're going to put this in. Uh, the, the one that we put in actually was bad, so we're putting this one back in. The thermal regulator is located inside this manifold right here. And there are a couple of different switches that can be the problem. But the place that it goes in is right where this plug is. We're going to be removing that plug after we shut off the heater and the pool. Now the way that we uh, troubleshooted the problem, we actually ended up replacing several things. We bought a new thermal regulator which fixed the problem for a short period of time and um, then I think maybe the new one went bad. But in any case, now as we test this a little more systematically, this is the high limit switch. And it is in a position where it's normally closed, which means these two wires are essentially connected by this switch. When it reaches a particular temperature, I think in this particular model it's 135 or 140 degrees, it opens the circuit, which then tells the circuit board to cut off the gas to the unit and to stop heating. So th this can go bad and be opening at the wrong time. And then also um, it's really designed to test whether or not the water inside this is overheating and, and that if it is overheating then that's when this will open. One of the causes of this water overheating in here is this thermal regulator right here which slides in and opens and closes according to the temperature setting on this and its reaction to the heated water. So to test that one of these was the problem, we first took this off and put a jumper cable or jumper wire across these. And what we found was that the heater continued to heat as if there was no overheating happening in here. Now part of the danger there is that if that valve is in fact not opening, then the water is overheating in here and this just isn't sensing it. So you never want to let it just run like that. Um, so we knew that in fact it was uh, it was working properly in terms of sensing a problem or over sensing a problem. So the next step was to remove this completely and let it run with this connected but without this. And in that situation it also continued to run. So it's one or the other or both that are bad. We then took this and tested this in hot water. Now the one I'm showing you here is one that's testing properly, but the one we pulled out was not opening at all, even in 200 degree water. So now we'll replace this in here. Now it's pretty easily replaced. You want to be careful as you're unscrewing this when the thermal regulator is inside because the this, this screw, or the spring rather, will push the screw of this plug out. And it's plastic and you don't want to um, strip out the threads and so when you get towards sort of the end you can feel that rubber gasket you want to push pressure toward the heater to keep that spring from sort of shooting that plug out so we pulled it out now we're simply going to feed that back inside yep go ahead and feed it right in there now wait we want to feel its seat all the way down inside once you feel it's backed up against the inner Plans, go ahead and slip that cap on there and by keeping pressure against it and just gently with your hand twisting that clockwise you'll feel the threads catch but you definitely don't want to force it if the threads feel cross-threaded because again we're talking plastic against plastic here if you've got it lined in there right you should be able to turn it several twists by hand that means it's not cross-threaded and at some point it'll get hard and you'll have to use the screwdriver okay and just simply putting the screwdriver in there and 
clockwise direction, tightening it in until it uh, all the way stops. Okay, so we've replaced the um, thermal regulator or thermostat and it is working properly. No error lights coming on or anything like that. But just to demonstrate what it was doing before, we're going to go ahead and unplug one of the wires down here. Yep, and that's going to signal an overheated condition that um, you see right away the service heater light comes on and you might notice that there's no more um, hot air coming out. Now if we flip this lid over and take a look, we'll see a couple of air lights on. There's one here. If you look really closely, that is the high limit sensor light, the HLS. The other is simply the um, service heater light. So the high limit sensor light is coming on to indicate this condition of the high limit of the um, water temperature having been met. This will stay on until we put those two wires back on. And with those on, the light goes off. It indicates heating. And after a few seconds, the gas will reignite and it will work. In a situation where that sensor is bad, the high limit sensor, now we, it's just kicked on here, so now we're getting hot air coming out. Now there's one other problem that's pretty common for these besides those two, and that's this part right here. This is the bypass valve. And it allows, with water pressure, it opens and allows a certain amount of hot water to mix with the cold water. This, it sits inside here and allows the cooler water coming in to mix inside with the hotter water so that it's not scalding water coming out. And sometimes this little piece will break off or it'll jam, and that'll be the problem. And that is essentially a 101 on what might be the problem with your gas master temp 400 heater.